So our next MySQL topic is going to be string functions. Now, if you've been following along with the series, you've already got all the data. If you haven't, if this is the first one you're watching, uh, or if you've skipped ahead, then you can download this code gist. I'll put the link in the description. You can download the zip and then expand that, get the SQL file from outside of there, go into your database, in the database, go to the import tab, click on the choose file button to select the SQL file, and then click go to import all the data. Then you're gonna have everything that I'm gonna be working with here. So string functions, working with strings. Now this generally has to do with when you are working with columns of string data and you want to do stuff to those strings. So I'm doing a select statement. I'm bringing back this data. Maybe I want to concatenate, put different values together. Maybe I need to format the data in some way. But whatever the case is, string functions are how we're going to do it. So we'll edit in line. Now I'm just going to bring in a couple of fields here. I'm going to take movie title and director because those are my two string fields. There we go, from movies. Now, that by itself, fair enough. It's just going to give me those two columns. If I run this query, uh, let's limit the data a little bit. Let's just say um, I'm going to bring 10 records back. There we go. So here's all the data that I'm going to be getting. Now, if I want to manipulate this data in some way, I need to use the string functions on the values that are right here inside the select clause. So around this title right here, movie title, I'm going to use something like upper. Upper will convert that to all uppercase. Lower, convert this to all lowercase. There's other methods like concat. You can just completely create a field if you want. If you want to have a column that has some information inside of it, you can do this. So here's the first value, and then I'm gonna have a space, and then the third value, like that. And we can give it an alias. Let's just call it txt. There we go. So movie titles have been all converted to uppercase. The directors are completely lowercase. And then that field that we're calling txt has first a space and the word second. So those three things. So these are string functions. Now in the MySQL documentation, there's a page on string functions. And there's this big long list of all the different string functions that you can use. And I'll let you go through, play with that. I encourage you to go through and experiment with them to just see all the different things that you can do. But I'll just I'll show you a few more just uh, so you get a good idea for what it is. Um, if you want to use strings of your own, then you put quotation marks around them. And you can do that inside any one of these string methods. You can put quotation marks around a string value. If there are no quotation marks, like here, director, movie title, there's no quotation marks. That means that this is going to be interpreted as a column value. So say as dir, you can see here from my alias, there's no quotation marks. Here, this is the column from the database. This is a column from the database. This is an alias. Because those are sort of, they're like variables when you're working with programming languages. There we go. So title, dir, txt. Those are the ones that we're getting here. Title, dir, txt. Um, other ones that we can do. So, well, here, let's eliminate that, make this a little bit shorter. Let's do length. That's going to determine for me the length of each of the titles. So how many characters are there in each one of the titles? So the first one, here, let's write them out beside so we can see them. So the movie title and how many characters are in the name. Okay, simple enough. Uh, concat, we did that one. Concat, concat WS, it's similar. So concat underscore WS. This is with separator. So I can define what it is 
There. So I'm saying I want to have a space, the letters ASDF, and then another space. And this is going to be the separator between each one of the, the additional fields that I put in here. Okay, so this is going to be my one column. It's going to be called con for concatenate. This is what I'm going to place in between these two values. If I have a third field, it's going to be turned into a string as well. Let's go. There we are. So here's the title, my separator, the space in ASDF, and then the space. That whole thing right there, that is my separator. And then you'll see it again right here. And then there's the movie ID, there's the director, there's the title, the three things. So concat, it's just a list of the things that you want to combine. Concat WS is concat with separator. So what is the value that you want to put between each of the other fields that you're placing inside there? Um, we've got trim. There's trim, L trim, R trim. This is for trim any extra space. There we go. So the ASDF, you don't really see it, but the spaces that are on either side are being trimmed off of here. If we do an L trim, then the space is only going to be removed from the left hand side. Hard to see here. Um, what else do we have? We've got lower and upper for converting to uppercase and lowercase. We've got concat, uh, left and right and mid. If you want to take part of the text, so let's say left from movie title, I'm going to take the five leftmost characters from each one of the movie titles and display that. There we are. So there's the five leftmost characters. There's also the right, the mid, mid you can specify the middle portion, right it's the five, the, the rightmost characters, you define the number that you want to use. Uh, L pad and R pad for creating space on either side, the left or the right. So you want to make sure that all of your fields, let's do that one, let's do a, an R pad, <coughs> pardon me, an R pad for the movie title. I'm going to say that the movie title is the string that I want to use. I want to make sure that each one of them is 50 characters long. And the thing that I'm going to fill it with is just that. So it's going to repeatedly fill it with this for any of the titles that don't make it to 50 characters. So let's try that. There we go. Now, every one of these titles, if you were to count the number of characters on each one, you will find that they are each 50 characters long because we've padded them up to 50 characters. Anything that wasn't filled gets filled with these X's. Okay. Um, locate, if you're searching inside, format can be useful. If you want to format some of the text, uh, great for numbers. Let's do a format with the now I'm also writing these all in uppercase. You can write them in lowercase. It's just, it's a convention that any of the keywords like select, from, limit, group by, uh, order by, on, inner join, the convention is that you write those in uppercase and then your table names, your column names, your fields, all those things are gonna be in lowercase. It's just the convention. Uh, so we're gonna do, uh, oh, the year, right. We're gonna do a format. So year, how many decimal places you want. I'm using year just because it's a number. And then if you want to specify a locale, here, we'll run it once like this. There we go. So three decimal places, and you can see it also inserts the comma. But formats like this, formats for numbers, will vary slightly depending on the language, the locale. So you can specify an optional third parameter in here. So German from Germany. 
There we go. That's with a decimal with a comma. So in English, this is the decimal. In German, they use the comma. And then the thousands get periods to separate them. If we go to French Canadian format, there we go. So commas is the decimal location, but there's no space in here for that if it's French Canadian. If we go English Canadian, there we are. So we're back to using the decimals with the commas separating the thousands. Okay, so I encourage you, please go and experiment with these. Have a look through them. There's lots of great stuff that you can do with them. Uh, it's really going to depend on the circumstances for what you're trying to do with the data. Just remember, quotation marks will go around the strings that you're creating. No quotation marks around the names for the aliases or the names for the columns that you're referring to. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, I'll put the link to both the documentation and to that SQL file in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.